Hi, this is Kelly, Program Manager, Cancer Support Community of Greater St. Louis. I am making this video today to read you some stories and talk about how you can use some stress management tips um, to communicate with your family and just to deal with this everyday stress of having to be home and still go to school and all of the things that we're going through. Before I get started, I just want to remind everyone that um, our normal programming is to have a monthly Families Connect group. We will also have things like family cooking demos, family yoga, all kinds of things. So if you are seeing this video and you are not on my email list, please feel free to email me at koneal at cancersupportstl.org. That's K-O-N-E-A-L at cancersupportstl.org. And I manage our Families Connect programs and I would love to add you to my email list to keep you updated. So the first book we're going to read is called The Listening Walk. This is a great book for um, just tuning in with your senses in the moment and just using the environment you're in, whether you're actually going for a walk or you're in your room or maybe cooking in the kitchen, um, playing in the backyard, whatever. Um, this is a great reminder on how to, um, you kind of use what you've got and where you're at. So this is the listening walk. I like to take walks. I take walks with my father and our dog. Our dog is called Major. He is an old dog and he does not walk very fast. We go down the street and we do not talk. My father puts his hands in his pockets and thinks. Major walks ahead and sniffs. I keep still and listen. I call this a listening walk. On a listening walk, I do not talk. I listen to all the different sounds. I hear many different sounds when I do not talk. First, I hear Major's toenails on the sidewalk. Major has long toenails. When he walks, his toenails scratch the sidewalk. They go twit, 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 twit. I hear my father's shoes on the sidewalk. My father walks slowly and his shoes go doop, 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 doop. I can't hear my shoes. I wear sneakers. I hear all sorts of sounds on a listening walk. I listen to sounds I never listened to before. I listen to lawnmowers. Lawnmowers are noisy. A lawnmower makes a steady zooming noise. It goes like this. Zoom. I like to listen to lawn sprinklers. Lawn sprinklers are very quiet. They make different sounds. Some sprinklers make a steady whispering sound like this. Other sprinklers turn around and around. They go like this. On a listening walk, I hear cars in the street. The shiny new cars are quiet. They make only a soft hmm. But old cars are very noisy. Old cars sound like this. Burka, 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 burka. When cars go around the corner too fast, the tires go Vroom. When cars stop quickly, the brakes go ee. On a listening walk, I hear all kinds of sounds. A bicycle bell ringing, ching, ching. A baby crying, wah. A jet flies over. Jets are very noisy when they're overhead. A jet goes, yoom. A boy runs by dribbling his basketball, bump, 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 bump. A lady hurries by us. She is wearing high heels. The lady's high heels go big bark, big bark, big bark. A bus is coming. The lady starts from big, 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 big. The bus stops at the corner. Fss. The lady gets on. The bus starts up again. Woof. Around the corner, men are digging up the street. They are using a jackhammer. It makes a loud banging noise. Ducka, 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 ducka. The jackhammer hurts my ears. I put my hands over my ears as we walk by. Ducka, ducka, ducka. Sometimes my father and I take Major to the park. It is quiet there. The sounds in the park are not loud like the noises in the street. My father and I walk down a shady path. I do not talk, I listen. I listen to my father's shoes on the path. They make a soft sound. They go choo, 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 choo. I listen to the birds in the park. I listen to the pigeons and the ducks. The pigeons fly down to meet us. They want us to feed them. The pigeons puff up their feathers. They take tiny little steps. They come toward us, nodding their heads. They say, Poo. At the pond, the ducks are waiting. They want us to feed them too. The small ducks swim up close. They turn their heads on one side and look up at us. The small ducks waggle their tails and quack. They say, gonk, 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 gonk. The big ducks are not so brave. They stay back and swim around in circles. The big ducks look at us, but they do not come close. 
The big duck said, gong, gong. Sometimes I hear a woodpecker in the park. The woodpecker sounds like a little hammer. He goes, wait, 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 wait. In the park, I hear crickets in the grass. The crickets go, creak, creak, creak. I hear the wind in the leaves. It whispers, shh. I hear bees in the flowers, buzz. It is fun to go on a listening walk. You do not have to go far. You can walk around the block and listen. You can walk around your yard and listen. You do not even have to take a walk to hear sounds. There are sounds everywhere all the time. All you have to do is keep still and listen to them. Right now there are sounds you can hear. When you finish this page, close the book and listen. How many different sounds can you hear right now? Close your book and count them. So again, that was the listening walk. And I love that book because again, it tunes into our senses and using mindfulness in the moment. And one of the points of mindfulness is to help focus in on the moment, kind of what is happening to you in this moment, not thinking about things that have already happened in the past or worrying about what's going to happen in the future, but just where am I right now and how can I center myself and deal with any stress I'm feeling. So you can also tune into your other senses. So there's listening. If you're eating food, you can really think about how that tastes, how it feels in your mouth. Um, there is smell. So again, if you are outside, you may smell you know, fresh flowers, if someone's barbecuing. There is um, sight, of course, so seeing everything around you, noticing colors, um, all of that stuff, touch. You know, if you're touching something smooth, something soft, just really, you know, how do your clothes feel against your skin? All of that good stuff. I think I got all of the uh, senses. So another book I wanted to read is kind of a classic. It's Have You Filled a Bucket Today? So this is really great for you and your family to um, take care of each other and have compassion for each other, especially when we're all dealing with a lot of unknowns, just a way to um, show each other that we love each other, we're thinking of each other. So this is Have You Filled a Bucket Today? A Guide to Daily Happiness for Kids. And also on this note, a reminder that when we are able to have members back in our office, we do have our um, St. Luke's Resource Library for Families Connect, where we have books that can be checked out um, for parents and kids to read together. All day long, everyone in the whole wide world walks around carrying an invisible bucket. You can't see it, but it's there. You have a bucket. Each member of your family has a bucket. Your grandparents, friends, and neighbors all have a bucket. Everyone carries an invisible bucket. Your bucket has one purpose only. Its purpose is to hold your good thoughts and good feelings about yourself. You feel very happy and good when your bucket is full, and you feel very sad and lonely when your bucket is empty. Other people feel the same way too. They're happy when their buckets are full, and they're sad when their buckets are empty. It's great to have a full bucket and this is how it works. You need other people to fill your bucket and other people need you to fill theirs. You can fill your own bucket too. So how do you fill a bucket? You fill a bucket when you show love to someone, when you say or do something kind, or even when you give someone a smile. That's being a bucket filler. A bucket filler is a loving, caring person who says or does nice things that make others feel special. When you make someone feel special, you are filling a bucket. But you can also dip into a bucket and take out some good feelings. You dip into a bucket when you make fun of someone, when you say or do mean things, or even when you ignore someone. That's being a bucket dipper. A bully is a bucket dipper. A bucket dipper says or does mean things that make others feel bad. Many people who dip have an empty bucket. They think they can fill their own bucket by dipping into someone else's, but that will never work. You never fill your own bucket when you dip into someone else's. But guess what? When you fill someone's bucket, you fill your own bucket too. You feel good when you help others feel good. All day long, we are either filling up or dipping into each other's buckets by what we say and what we do. Try to fill a bucket and see what happens. You love your mom and dad. Why not tell them you love them? You can even tell them why. Your caring words will fill their buckets right up. Watch for smiles to light up their faces. You will feel like smiling too. A smile is a good clue that you have filled a bucket. If you practice, you'll become a great bucket filler. 
Just remember that everyone carries an invisible bucket and think of what you can say or do to fill it. Here are some ideas for you. You could smile and say hi to the bus driver. He has a bucket too. You could invite the new kid at school to play with you. You could write a thank you note to your teacher. You could tell your grandpa that you like to spend time with him. There are many ways to fill a bucket. Bucket filling is fun and easy to do. It doesn't matter how young or old you are. It doesn't cost any money, it doesn't take much time. And remember, when you fill someone else's bucket, you fill your own bucket too. When you're a bucket filler, you make your home, your school, and your neighborhood better places to be. Bucket filling makes everyone feel good. So why not decide to be a bucket filler today and every day? Just start each day by saying to yourself, I'm going to do something to fill someone's bucket today. And at the end of each day, ask yourself, did I fill a bucket today? Yes, I did. That's the life of a bucket filler. And that's you. So how can we fill each other's buckets, especially from a distance? Well, within your own home, of course, you can tell your family members, your loved ones that live with you, your pets, you know, that you love them and why, what you appreciate about them. I know that being stuck together can be frustrating, you know, um, but still, what are some good things that um, come out of spending time together? If it helps, you could have a literal bucket or a container for each person in the home where you could write notes or put in photos or pictures of things that remind you of them that you think they would appreciate. Um, for a lot, you know, the book had a lot of examples of filling other people's buckets in the community. Um, that's great to think about for the future. In the meantime, it's, you know, if there's, you can send a message to your teacher, send a message to your friends you're not able to see from school, um, you know, making cards to send to your family members you don't live with, um, finding little ways to say thank you and that you appreciate other people kind of spreading that love and compassion around. So I hope this video was helpful for you and your family. Again, my email is koneal at cancersupportstl.org, K-O-N-E-A-L at cancersupportstl.org. Please feel free to reach out with any questions or feedback and continue to check back at CSC St. Louis's website, cancersupportstl.org to see our continuously updated virtual resources page. Thank you.